No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Eleanor Roosevelt. Recruit them entry. Empowering your employment. Podcast episode series part three with our guest Marie Naruso. The thing, then when you show up at an interview and then they're going to ask you about what you have done in the past and they're going to ask you behavioral question, then you're probably not going to have anything to give. A lot of the time, if you lie or try to bluff on your resume, then when it's time to be face-to-face in the interview, it's going to come out. And if it doesn't come out at the interview, it's going to come out sometime during the job. I mean, I just want to be the best candidate that they could want to have. I want to be perfect on paper. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, well, okay. I guess I have to be honest with my resume then. All right. Yes, you definitely have to because it will come out. And I've seen so many times job seekers, if they apply to a job and then they get an interview, they don't have stories that prove what they have written on the resume. Or they go to the job and then they ask them to work with a certain software that they said they were you know, we're proficient and they have no idea what they're doing. I've seen that firsthand. I mean, I joke, you know, I'm kidding around, you know, just kind of be a pain in the butt. But I remember a, boy, I sound old, I say that, back in the day, I remember (laughs) in my time, you know, but it it really was, this was a, was a part-time graphic design position. There was a couple of interns that were also hired for the summer and they said that they knew this uh, software. And the one intern was pretty cool. She knew what she needed to know, but the other one just literally, she must have bought her way into college because she didn't really know anything. She wasn't learning anything. She was constantly on her phone during the summertime. And I guess it came down to, there was just too many people going on, you know, too many people that were in the office at the time and they had to make decisions. I guess I wasn't really a key requirement, you know, for that business. So they needed the software. That's what they were there to do. And they shifted around accordingly. Well, come to find out later on when that internship was over, that girl didn't do anything at all that she was supposed to do. She did not know the software and it was a complete waste of time. She actually ended up messing up a lot of the databases for the customers and clients that they had while she was there and I was just I laughed I laughed as soon as I heard I laughed telling you about it now because you know again I I was joking about it prior but you really need to do exactly what it is that you say that you can do on a resume even as a student hey listen you're trying to be impressive you want people to hire you you want people to to bring you on for that internship for that possibility but it's not by line you know you can adjust your titles you know, as, as it sees fit a little bit, a little finesse that way, or reword responsibilities slightly so that it matches what it is that you're doing, just as long as it's still factual. The titles don't really matter as much as what the experience is and the supporting management body that's there that's going to vouch for you. I've done management duties and I wasn't a manager, but if I'm applying for a management position, I will say that I was a manager there because again, I did management duties. And whoever that's going to call as that reference and verify, they will verify that. It does count to, to make sure that you have those resources available. But that's also why I ask, you know, you know these, these constant mistakes and volunteer experiences because you want to give people the best opportunity possible for candidacy, but you want to do it in a, in a successful, positive, morally thumbs up manner uh, rather than lying your way there. So I'm sure, I mean, you really haven't had too much experience with students, just folks in general looking for opportunities, but, you know, not really coming clean about their experiences, right? I've seen it. I haven't, you know, experienced it directly, but I've I've seen it, you know, like you look at a resume and then you call the person and you ask them and they have no idea what you're talking about. Nice. So you can you can tell when somebody's lying. That's why, you know, they have so many phone uh, interviews and then face to face interviews and then they are going to test you with different things. You know, even though the process is long on their side, they're just trying to clean out the people that are not fit for the position. My thing to say is drill down on your strength and your value and then apply to jobs that line up with that and then with your interests as well. And that will be the best way for you to, you know, get a job because you need to know who you are and you need to know what you want before you apply to something. 
because if you're going to lie your way through it, not going to be a good ending. <laughs> Agreed. Well, from what it is that you've come across, I mean, we're talking about what to focus in on, what to avoid. What are really three solid steps or points of focus that you would share with potential candidates, students, job seekers that are looking for work that would benefit them in their job search? One of the number one thing I would say that would benefit them in their job search, networking. I don't know how many times I will say it and say it over again, networking. And especially because you're a student, you can leverage the fact that you are a student and that you want to learn more about the company or about the role itself. Informational interview, I suggest everybody to Google that. It's definitely a great way to meet and talk to people and definitely ask them questions that you are unsure about towards the job. The second one would be narrow down your job search. Don't go general and try to apply it to everything that you see just to get a job. I know it's hard to do, especially, you know, when you're trying to get a job to pay for the next month's rent. If you keep applying to general job, you will probably not get a job that's suited for you. And you're going to end up hating the job after. But if you do your research on the companies, if you do your research on the role, and if you match up with the role, then your best bet is that you will get job sooner than if you go more on a broad scale. My third one would be, and that's very important. That's what every job seeker, everybody out there should do before, you know, they pursue a career, look for a job or do anything is to know yourself. A lot of time when you see people talk about career exploration, career coaching, they will mention you need to know your interests, you need to know your values, your strength, your challenges, your barriers. And those are really important because then you know what to leverage and when it comes to your job search. And then the challenges, if you know your challenges, then you will find a way to find resources to tackle them. If you don't know what your challenge is, then you would not know what to tackle and what's coming in the way of you to get to where you want to be. So mm -hmm. that would be my three. Nice. All right. So to review for everybody who's listening, number one, network. Number two, do your job research. Number three, know yourself. I like them. Very solid points. Very easy to forget, but very good to keep focus on. I like to wrap up our episodes with a, because uh, I'm sure we all have them, is you being a former recruiter yourself as well, to sharing one of the recruiting uh, horror stories or career placement stories, and then uh, ending our episode with a awesome placement story. So they can be one and the same if it started out bad, but then ended out good, <laughs> or one bad and one good. You know, I'm sure you have quite a few, but give us your, your choice pick. Worst placement story, I would say, uh, when I was a recruiter, I was, well, I was headhunting as well. We were screening a lot of uh, candidates. At one point, I thought I found the perfect candidate for one of my employers. Turns out, after reference check, not so great. So what ended up happening is that we weren't doing the reference check, so we were passing it on to the employer. And the employer did the interview, loved him, phone interview, face-to-face -face interview. And then when he came to the reference check, he was not who he was claiming to be. So a lot of his past employers ended up not giving good recommendations for him, which I wonder why he put them on the list. <laughs> Wow. But yes. <laughs> so the employer was definitely not happy. <laughs> I can imagine. About, about that. But I think I would say that's my worst story. I know it's not that bad compared to some of the horror stories that I've heard. I'm kind of happy this is my worst story. <laughs> oh, you should rewind to the earlier episodes of the podcast. I mean, there are some <laughs> definite horror stories there. But to clarify, just to make sure. So when they when they did the background check on him, when you said he, he wasn't who he said he was, was he like assuming somebody else's identity or was his background just not as squeaky clean as he made it out to be? You remember when we mentioned lying on a resume? Yes. So he did, definitely did all that. So everything on his resume was not what he claimed he did. Have your own recruiter or candidate story that you'd like to share with us? If you're listening on YouTube, comment below. Otherwise, feel free to email your experience to ask at recruitmentry.com. You can find our full conversation of this episode on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash recruitmentry. Thanks for checking out this episode and feel free to like, subscribe and share the content. 
a Mike Tech Studios production.